Santa. One snowy morning, Dolly the ladybird turned to Berry the snail and said, Hey Berry, Santa's coming tonight. Really? Berry wondered. That's right, he leaves presents in the boots of good children. Remember to put your boots in the window. That evening, Berry cleaned his boots and popped them in the window. He was so excited when he went to bed that he couldn't get to sleep. He stared out at the sky to see when Santa would appear with his reindeer sleigh. Dolly got up early the next morning. She ran straight to the window. Her boots were packed with presents, colouring pencils and a big red apple. Berry ran straight to his window too. He was very excited. He couldn't wait to see what Santa had brought him. But oh dear, his little boots were empty. Berry was so upset that he didn't see the huge red parcel in the other window. He looked inside his boots again and again. He shook them upside down, but there was nothing in them. He was so sad that he decided to run away. Santa didn't bring me anything, but I've been such a good little snail. Dolly went over to Berry's house. Hello! Look what I got from Santa! Dolly started to worry. She knocked and knocked, but Berry didn't open the door. Where's Berry gone? I have to find him! Stanley the stag beetle, Balthazar the bee and Flutter the butterfly went with her. Berry? It was getting dark by the time the four friends found Berry. He was sitting on a tree stump and crying. Dolly ran to him. What's wrong, Berry? What happened? Santa didn't bring me anything, but I've been such a good little snail. Don't be silly. I'm sure you got a present, Dolly reassured her friend. Maybe it was so big, Santa couldn't fit it in your boots and he put it somewhere else. No, I didn't get anything. I don't think Santa's real at all. Just then, a sleigh appeared in the sky. It was being pulled by two reindeers. Ho, 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 Santa waved at the children. I hope you all liked your presents. See you again next year. Berry was so surprised. Let's all go to Berry's and look for his present. The little snail felt much better already. They saw the big red parcel the minute they walked into Berry's house. Look, your present's in the other window. There it is. It's wonderful. Berry opened the present. It was a colourful wind chime. When Berry shook it, the little bells knocked into each other and made a pretty tinkling sound. It's beautiful. Stanley fixed the wind chime by the door and they all said good night to Berry. Berry jumped happily into bed and fell fast asleep to the tinkling of the chime. Berry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? The Missing Nuts. Hello, Berry. Hurry up. Let's go and see Reggie Squirrel. We really should say goodbye to him before he hibernates for winter, Dolly the Ladybird said. Berry put on his hat, scarf and gloves and the two friends made their way to Reggie Squirrel's home. 
their friend the squirrel was sitting on a branch in front of his home. We wanted to say goodbye before you snuggle up to sleep through the chilly winter. Why don't you come up for a glass of juice and a quick nut snack, Reggie suggested. Look at all the yummy food I've gathered for winter. My pantry's full. But the pantry was empty. Oh my, where have all my hazelnuts and walnuts gone? Where are my delicious pine cones, acorns and raisins? I think this might be where the nuts rolled out, Berry said, pointing to a little hole in the corner of the pantry. Someone's been chewing the tree trunk, Dolly said in surprise. And I think I know who it was, the little snail added. Don't worry, Reggie. We'll catch the troublemakers and find your nuts. And don't forget the pine cones and acorns too, the squirrel added. The two friends headed towards the big meadow. They heard loud laughter as they got closer. I knew it was them. They're always getting into some sort of trouble, Dolly whispered to Berry. I'm sure they're doing something naughty right now, Berry added. Someone chewed a hole in Reggie Squirrel's tree trunk right outside his pantry and now all of his nuts are missing. It was you lot, wasn't it? But we didn't mean any harm. We were just chewing the bark like we always do and we didn't know that his pantry was on the other side, the smallest bark beetle explained. What can we do to help? Come with us and we'll find the nuts that rolled away. We haven't got that much time. It could start to snow at any minute. We'll never be able to find his food in the snow, so hurry. They all took a close look at the tree trunk. The nuts all rolled out here and then they fell to the ground and carried on rolling down the hill, Reggie explained. The gang of friends found Reggie's goodies in a pile at the bottom of the hill. Hooray! Reggie shouted with delight. Would you please bring all the food back to my home while I patch the hole up in my pantry? Reggie told the bark beetles. They carefully placed the hazelnuts, walnuts and acorns back in his pantry. Berry and Dolly gave them a hand. They worked as fast as they could, but it got dark very quickly and they still had a huge stack left at the bottom of the hill. We'll never finish in time, one of the bark beetles sighed. We could really use some extra help, another added. Berry the snail suddenly sprang to his feet and left in a hurry without saying a word. He was soon back and had a trumpet in his hand. He blew it so loudly that everybody could hear it. Soon all the friends in the forest gathered. Dolly climbed up on a big boulder and told them all what had happened to Reggie Squirrel's winter food supply. All the nuts rolled out of the hole. We've got to take the food back to Reggie's home. If you all help, it can be done before dark. Ready, set, go, Berry said, and he lifted a nut from the pile. He gave it to Dolly. She handed it to one of the bark beetles. The bark beetle gave it to the bee. The bee handed it to the dragonfly. And so it moved back up the hill to the squirrel's pantry. By the time the moon appeared in the sky, all the hazelnuts, acorns, walnuts and chestnuts were safely stowed away in Reggie Squirrel's winter home. Reggie happily put the last nut back in his packed pantry. Thank you. I'm so glad I've got so many good friends. It's time for me to tuck myself up in bed before it starts snowing. See you again in spring. The grateful squirrel yawned. Barry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? Sunflowers. Barry and Dolly planted sunflower seeds in the spring and watered the seeds until little shoots soon appeared. The shoots grew into little plants that grew into big plants. Then buds appeared that opened into lovely yellow flowers in the summer. Hooray! The friends cheered when they saw the lovely flowers. Berry noticed that the flowers pointed one way in the morning and another in the afternoon. Look, Dolly, they're turning their heads. That's because they always turn to face the sun. That's why they're called sunflowers. 
when the sun went down, the sunflowers hung their heads and went to sleep. All the forest friends were woken the next morning by shouts of panic. Oh dear, what's happened? Our lovely sunflowers! Dolly cried. Who could have done such a terrible thing? Berry wept. Someone has chewed through the stems of our sunflowers. Flutter washed their wounds with fresh dew and Dolly bandaged them all with soft blades of grass. The sunflowers slowly started to smile again. The friends all gathered in Balthazar's house to decide what to do next. What are we going to do? Berry sobbed. Someone needs to stand guard at night. I'll go first, said Dolly bravely. The little ladybird hid quietly behind the bush and kept a close eye on the sunflowers. She didn't have to wait for very long. A hamster soon appeared and started to chew at the stems of the sunflowers. Dolly jumped out from her hiding place and shouted, Shoo! This surprised the hamster and he ran away. He didn't come back again that night. Flutter guarded the sunflowers the next night, and then Balthazar, and then Stanley. Soon it was Berry's turn. The little snail hid quietly behind the bush and waited. He waited and waited until he eventually fell asleep. He wasn't even woken by the sound of the hamster chewing at the sunflower stems. Oh dear, I must have fallen asleep. I didn't guard the sunflowers, Berry sobbed when he saw the sadly sagging sunflowers the following morning. Berry fell asleep. He slept while the hamster chewed the stems again. Why do you all look so sad? asked Dr Owl. Dolly told him what had happened to the sunflowers. I think you should talk to the hamster. Ask him not to hurt the sunflowers, Dr Owl suggested. There he is. He's asleep in the bush, Berry whispered to the others. The noise woke the sleeping hamster. The hamster looked scared of the friends and the friends felt frightened of the hamster. There's no need to be scared of us. We just wanted to ask you not to chew our sunflowers. But then what will I eat? The hamster told them. We'll bring you plenty of apples and carrots to nibble on. Where do you live? The little snail asked. I haven't got a house of my own, the hamster said sadly. You haven't got a house? Balthazar repeated in surprise. Then we'll build you one. Dolly brought apples, Berry brought seeds, Flutter brought raisins, Balthazar brought dandelion leaves and Stanley brought carrots. My new house is really super, the hamster said with a cheery smile. And thank you so much for all the yummy food. The hamster never chewed the sunflower stems again. And they smiled happily at Berry and Dolly and all their friends for the rest of the summer. The Star House One summer evening, Berry and Dolly were sitting playing cards in Dolly's house when they spotted a bright light over the hill. What was that? Berry asked. It looked like a shooting star. A shooting star? Let's go and take a closer look, Dolly suggested. Berry and Dolly held hands and walked in the direction of the strange light. Look over there, Berry! The little snail boy's mouth fell open in surprise. Right on the top of the hill stood a house the shape of a star. Where did that come from? It wasn't there the other day, Berry whispered. You stay here and I'll run and tell the others, Dolly whispered back and she flew off to tell Balthazar, Flutter and Stanley. 
When they were all together, the group of friends crept slowly towards a peculiar house. Stanley knocked on the front door. A shy girl popped her head around the door. She had long hair that sparkled with tiny stars and golden wings that glistened in the darkness. Berry was the first to speak. Who are you and how did you get here? But the girl didn't say a word. Can we help you? No answer again. The girl just stood there and said nothing. All right then, if you're not going to speak, then don't. Come on, let's go home. Wait a minute, Dolly said. Perhaps she can't speak. She can't speak? The others asked back in amazement. Dolly picked up a stick and scripted a star on the ground. Then she handed the stick to the girl. The little girl reached for the stick and started to draw. A little harp? Dolly asked, and the little girl nodded. You've lost it? Flutter asked, and the little girl pointed to the window. It fell out of the window? The little girl nodded again. I don't understand, Balthazar grumbled. I understand, Dolly said. She lives up in the sky, but she dropped her harp out of the window and she's come down here to look for it. Then let's help her, Balthazar suggested. Don't worry, we'll find it, they all told her, and they hurried off into the forest to search for her missing instrument. I can't find it, Berry said with a sorry sigh. I've looked in all the bushes. I can't find it either and I've looked absolutely everywhere, Balthazar added. I'm going to take a look higher up, Flutter told them and she flapped up into the trees. Here it is, here it is, I found it. The little butterfly girl soon shouted. Flutter lifted a little golden harp out of the canary's nest. She carefully handed the harp back to the star girl. The little girl flew back into the house and closed the door. She lifted a sparkling star out of her hair and gave it to Flutter. Is that for me? The little butterfly girl asked in surprise, and the star girl nodded. Then she sat in the window and started to play her harp. And as she played, the star house began to lift higher and higher. She's flying up into the sky, Dolly said with her eyes wide in wonderment. Soon it looked as tiny as all the other twinkling stars in the night sky. It's a shame that she had to go. Stanley sighed. Flutter took very good care of her twinkling star. She kept it in a little box and only wore it in her hair on very special days. It always reminded her of the little girl playing the harp in her star house, high up in the sky. Barry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? The Little Bumblebee Early one morning, Berry, Dolly and Balthazar went out to play in the meadow. They wanted to try out the new parachute the little bee had made. But a little bumblebee was picking lilac flowers and singing a happy song. The winter's gone and it's the spring. Lilac is my favourite thing. Balthazar was the first to greet her. Hello, little bumblebee. My name's Balthazar. This is Berry the Snail and Dolly the Ladybird. Who are you? My name's Betty. I was flying home and I decided to stop and pick lilac flowers in the meadow. We're on our way to try this new parachute. Do you want to come with us? Balthazar asked. I'd love to. Balthazar and Betty were the first to jump and then the other friends tried the colourful parachute. They played until it got dark. Will you play with us again tomorrow? Balthazar asked excitedly. I can't. I have to leave early tomorrow morning. My home is far away from here and I still have a long way to go. So Berry, Dolly and Balthazar said goodbye to Betty. 
Balthazar looked very upset, so Dolly asked him, What's wrong? Balthazar's got a girlfriend, Berry laughed. Don't make fun of him, Berry, Dolly said angrily. You know what, Balthazar? Ask Betty to stay here. We can build her a house in the woods. That's a super idea. I'll go to the meadow tomorrow morning and ask her to stay. Balthazar, Dolly and Berry got up very early the next day. They hurried to the meadow to talk to Betty. But the friends were too late. The little bumblebee had already left. The only thing they found was a farewell note she'd left for them pinned to a tree. Balthazar sat down on the grass and started to cry. Berry didn't laugh at him this time. Let's go after her, the little snail said. I'm sure we can catch her up. Berry, you're such a slow snail. We'll never catch up with Betty if you don't hurry up. Berry was going to say something back to Balthazar when a hedgehog stepped out of the bushes. Perhaps I can help. Now, I'm not too fast, but I'm sure I'm much faster than you three. The friends liked the idea. They built a little cart out of a horse chestnut shell and tied it to the hedgehog's spikes. The hedgehog cart was ready to roll. Let's rest a little while, Dolly suggested when it got dark. We'll carry on tomorrow morning. Balthazar started to cry again. We'll never find her. I can smell something sweet. It's lilac blossom. Lilac? Dolly wondered. But there aren't any lilac bushes around here. Let's look around. Would you like to come back and live with us? We could build you a little bumblebee house in a tree. You wouldn't have to fly back to your faraway home. We'd be so happy if you lived with us. That's a super idea. We'd all be very happy, Berry and Dolly nodded. Thank you. I'd love to come and live with you, Betty replied. She was happy. You came all this way to find me. That's so nice of you. They all jumped into the hedgehog cart and trundled back to the meadow. They started to build the house the very next morning. They built Betty a pretty tree house near the lilac field. When the bumblebee's house was ready, they had a big party. All the forest friends were invited. They danced and ate late into the night and made their new neighbour very welcome indeed. Barry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? Spring Sports Day. Barry, Dolly, Flutter and Balthazar were sitting by the lake, throwing pebbles into the water. Barry hit a floating log a couple of times and his friends clapped. Come down to the meadow now. The spring sports day is about to start, Stanley told them all. Their forest friends had already gathered in the meadow. The little beetles all put their running shorts on and stood in line. They all ran as fast as they could. They had to run three times around the meadow. It's not fair! Eddie cheated! He cut the corner! Leapy, the grasshopper, shouted. There's to be no cheating. Let's start the competition again, but no cheating. Stanley came first, Leapy came second and Balthazar came third. Berry finished last. Balthazar and Eddie started whispering. He's as slow as a snail. Don't make fun of him. It's not nice, Dolly said angrily. Now it's time for the high jump. The one who can pick the highest apple is the winner, Alfonso said. The friends took a run and tried to jump as high as possible. Leapy got the highest apple, Flutter got the second one, and Eddie the potato beetle grabbed the third apple. No matter how hard Berry tried, he couldn't even reach the lowest apple. I can't do it. I just can't 
do it, he sulked. Come on, Berry, you'll be better at the next race. Don't be sad, Rosita said. But Berry was too nervous to join the rolling race because he was frightened he'd crack his shell. The others all lined up and rolled from one end of the meadow to the other. Dolly was the fastest and she won. Now let's start flying, Alfonso said. The fastest to fly to the top of this tree and get a pine cone from there is the winner. The beetles started immediately. Flutter, Balthazar, Dolly and Zephyr all joined the race. Flutter was the fastest and got to the top of the tree first. I can't fly either, Berry snivelled. Don't be so angry, Berry. It's time for the skipping competition now. The fastest skipper wins. The four contestants started skipping. But suddenly, Berry got tangled in the rope and hurt himself. The others were worried and ran over to him. I'm not doing any more silly races. I can't do anything. I'm going home. We have to think of something. We have to cheer Berry up, Dolly said. You're right. What's he really good at? Rosita asked. I know, Flutter shouted. Throwing! That's a super idea, Balthazar agreed. Berry was the only one who could hit the log in the lake. They made five piles. The first one was made out of apples, the second of horse chestnuts, the third of pine cones, the fourth out of hazelnuts, and the fifth one out of pears. Dolly convinced Berry to come back to the meadow. It's time for the throwing competition. Do you want to join in? Rosita asked. Hooray! Throwing? Of course I'm in. Everybody had a go, but Berry was the best. He was the only one who managed to knock over all five piles. You see, Berry, I'm the best runner. Leapy's the best high jumper. Flutter's the best at flying. Dolly at rolling. Rosita can skip the fastest. And you're the best thrower. Everybody's good at something, Stanley explained. Berry got a beautiful, shiny chestnut engraved by Alfonso which said, throwing first place. Barry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? Bubbles Tower. It was a lovely summer afternoon and Bubble the baby beetle decided to play with his colorful building blocks. I'm going to build a tall tower with my blocks, he thought to himself and carried them to a hill nearby. He tipped the bright blocks out of their box in the shade of a big oak tree. As the tower grew, it was harder and harder for Bubble to reach the top. He had to stand on tiptoe and was just reaching for the top when his hand slipped and the tower tumbled to the ground. Oh no, Bubble complained. Now I have to start all over again. So the baby beetle started again from the beginning. The tower soon began to grow and was very tall indeed. But oh dear, an acorn from the oak tree knocked the baby beetle's tower down. My lovely tower! My tower's ruined again! It was the silly oak tree's fault, he said out loud. So Little Bubble started again, but this time he moved out from under the old oak tree. He was stacking the blocks on top of each other when his friends Berry the Snail, Dolly the Ladybug and Stanley the Stag Beetle came walking over. Wow, you've built a beautiful tower, Bubble, they all said. Yes, it's nearly finished. All I have to do is put the red triangle on the very top. But then the wind blew and toppled his tall tower. Bubble got very angry. I don't believe it. I don't want to build towers anymore. I'm going home. His friends ran after him. Bubble, wait. Why don't we rebuild your tower together? 
No, I don't want to build towers anymore. You can't build a really high tower with this many blocks anyway, grumbled. He went into his house and slammed the door shut. How can we help Bubble? Dolly puzzled. We've got to think of a way to cheer him up somehow. I know what we can do, Stanley said. I've got another set of building blocks at home. I'll go and fetch them so we can build a really high tower together. That's a super idea. I've a box full of building blocks too. And I'll bring mine. We'll build the tallest tower ever. Berry pulled his blocks in a little trailer. Dolly pushed hers in a wheelbarrow. And Stanley carried his in a big basket. Hello, Bubble. Look, we brought our building blocks. Why don't we build a big tower together? Dolly asked nicely. We could build it in your house so that the wind won't knock it down again, Berry added. Goodness me, look at all those building blocks. We'll be able to build a very big tower with them, the baby beetle said with a smile. Now it's time to pop the red triangle on the top. You should put it on, Bubble, Stanley suggested. Hooray! It's finished! They all shouted together. Then Berry, Dolly and Stanley said goodnight to Bubble. The baby beetle went to bed very happy that night. He stared at the tower until he fell fast asleep. Barry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? The Kite Barry the snail was still asleep when Dolly the ladybird knocked on his window. Good morning, Barry. Let's make a kite. Dolly drew a kite and Berry cut it out. They decorated it with colourful ribbons and then they tied it to a long piece of string. Let's see if it flies, Dolly said. They took each other's hand and set off to fly their kite. But no matter how hard the two of them tried, the kite just wouldn't fly. I'll climb up this tree and try it from there. Maybe then it'll fly, Dolly explained. But the kite just fell to the ground again. All of a sudden, the wind blew up and carried the kite away and took Dolly with it. Berry climbed up the tree and grabbed Dolly's feet, but he couldn't pull her back, so now the two of them were flying. Balthazar the bee flew by. He caught hold of Berry's feet, but he couldn't pull the kite back either, so now the three of them were flying. Eddie the potato beetle was sitting on top of a pine tree. He caught Balthazar's feet, so now the four of them were flying. Leapy, help! Balthazar cried to the grasshopper, who was just hopping by. Leapy caught Eddie's feet, so now the five of them were flying. The wind got stronger and stronger. Flutter the butterfly flew by. She caught Leapy's feet, so now the six of them were flying. Stanley the stag beetle and Zephyr the dragonfly looked at their friends in despair.
wind's blowing us right into the forest. The kite got tangled in the top of a tall tree and they landed in the treetops. The wind died down and the sun came out. Berry gave the ladybird a worried look. Dolly, I can't fly. How am I going to get down from here? Don't worry, Berry. I'm sure we'll think of something. I know what to do. Jump into this blanket, Berry. Don't be afraid. You won't hurt yourself. Berry jumped down into the blanket and bounced back up in the air. Look at me. This is fun. We want to try, the others shouted. The little friends jumped up and down on the blanket until it got dark. Long after they were all in bed asleep, the wind blew up again and carried the kite far, far away.